This video introduces a remote command pendant specifically designed for Mach 4 to operate the software and also to jog using a joystick. Uh, other than the joystick, it's also a little bit unusual in that it has a 7 inch touch screen uh, rather than the traditional um, series of buttons. Something that we need to do even though we have a large touch screen is to try to uh, maximize the usage of this available space. Uh, in order to do that, uh, what we do is we use the same buttons for multiple purposes. While there's no RPM, we don't really need those cells, so we, uh, we use them for uh, locking and unlocking the spindles. In the middle of the screen, you see uh, real-time gauges that show uh, the spindle load. So uh, while the spindles are disabled, we don't obviously need to have uh, gauges showing what the load is. So we use those, those blocks also to as the enable and disable button safety features. When you have a pendant uh, that has physical controls on it, you need to be able to move it around without accidentally hitting the controls and having something happen. We use a uh, arming and disarming method. So with everything disarmed, uh, you can pick up the pendant, move it around. You don't have to worry about hitting a cell on the touch screen and having something start or having a, an action done. On the right hand side, up and down the right hand side, in tip traditional pendants, um, what you might have is an array of buttons and you may have nine buttons, you may have 12 buttons. It's really literally impossible to remember what's in all those buttons. In order to, uh, to make best use of a, of a touch screen, what we have here are uh, cells and each one of those cells can have uh, a Mach 4 command in it or a macro and uh, you, def you define what kind of text you want. You have three lines of text there, you can put whatever you want as a description of what's in that cell. So uh, you have a knob up on the top left hand side of the pendant that uh, has multiple purposes and it has different colors. It lights up in green and red to show what its, what its purpose is at that moment. You change the purpose by pressing down. When it's green, what it's doing is it's changing the contents of one cell. So you can individually change the contents of all those five cells and, and have predefined uh, macros or commands in each one independently. Red means it's time to arm these and if you're on a cell and the cell is blue it's disarmed. If you press that and hold that for three quarters of a second you'll arm that cell. And you can arm the cells individually so you can take any five uh, cells that you want, group them together and then call them up all, all together at once. Uh, you call them together at once, you can arm them all at once, disarm them all at once. As soon as you start changing uh, the cells using groups, uh, all of the arming goes away. But it's easy to bring back, so all you have to do is just uh, press the home area and all five of them will arm at the same time. Or you can arm individual ones as you see fit. Uh, you can uh, make the groups however you want them. You just create, the, just, uh, just change individually the cells, put what you want in the cells, Go down to the group, hold the button for what, for three quarters of a second and you have a new group. Uh, you can have as many groups as you want, you can have as many cells as you want. All of that information is kept in a data file on the disk that you can edit with any, with any editor. Uh, in order for this uh, type of a scheme to work safely, there has to be some kind of a, a checking between the pendant and Mach 4 to make sure that nothing accidental happens. So the way we do this, when you press an armed cell, the pendant sends a command to Mach 4 and waits for an acknowledgement from Mach 4. When the acknowledgement comes back from Mach 4, the, the pendant compares it to what it sent and if it matches, then it sends a separate command to Mach 4 to say, okay, we're both on the same page, go ahead and execute this command. The joystick jogging is, uh, is, is an interesting feature in that you can go in all directions at once. You don't have to go only one direction and then change from X to Y and then rotate a dial some more. The, f the further you deflect the joystick, the faster the jog will happen. So you can go from one thousandth of an inch at a time crawling along to whatever the full axis speed is just by pushing the, uh, 
the joystick further. This joystick is industrial quality. It does not have pots on it. It has encoders on it. So there's an absolute dead zone in the middle. So there's no creeping. There's no, there's no chance that the, uh, that the, that the axis is going to move w unless you press that joystick over. It will not move on its own. There's no jitter. There's no interference. Uh, it's absolutely uh, s safe to use. All of the buttons between the pendant and Mach 4 are synchronized. So if you press a button on Mach 4 screen, or click on a button on the Mach 4 screen, then the, uh, the corresponding control on the, on the pendant will also change. So uh, the pendant and Mach 4 are always synchronized. So you won't have a different kind of a, a different command showing on the Mach 4 screen than what shows up on the pendant. The intern has two speed modes. One is set speed, which is simple to understand. You just set in the RPM that you want, and you turn it on, and it goes to that RPM. You can operate the slider in real time, and it'll change the RPM, or you can use G-codes, which change the RPM, or you can just type in a number into that box. The other mode is the auto speed mode, which is shown in blue. What that does is it tracks the Y-axis or the Z-axis, which is one of the two axes you'll be holding a tool in for turning and uh, it, depending upon how close that tool is to the center line, it will automatically calculate the correct RPM to maintain the surface feet per minute that you input. The intern speed control knob on the pendant uh, controls only the slider for whatever mode that you're in. And uh, so if you're in set speed mode, for example, and you turn that knob, it'll only change the set speed slider. And, and if you're in surface feet per minute mode, which is auto speed, it will only change the blue slider. Small movement in the surface feet per minute can result in a very large change in RPM. So it's important that uh, that you don't accidentally, you're not accidentally able to change the surface feet per minute. If you and they have a switch, you press that uh, rotary knob down and turn it, and you get a rough adjustment. It moves 100 RPM at a time. When you when you release the knob and turn it, and you're moving one to five RPM at a time. So you have a fine adjustment and a rough adjustment on the same rotary dial. It's very intuitive. Uh, now, acceleration, on the other hand, is something that you may want to change on a job-by-job -job basis because you may have a, if you're using a collet and a three-quarter inch piece of aluminum, that, that you can accelerate very quickly. But if you have a big 14-inch chuck on there or a very large work piece or even a, a, a trunnion table, then you need to slow down the accelerations or you're going to get a fault. So those controls only are on the screen and there's a little button there that you can push and a pop-up comes up and you change the acceleration parameters and, uh, and it does that in real time, it's immediate. So you can change it from a high acceleration to a low acceleration uh, very quickly and very conveniently and it remembers those settings. When you shut down Mach 4 and restart it again, it'll retain those same settings because it stores them. If you, since you can move in multiple directions at one time and you get a one axis set exactly where you want it, you may want to make sure that that axis doesn't move while you're moving another axis. So each axis can be independently uh, disabled. So for example, if you want to, if you get the X axis exactly where you want it, you can just turn the X axis off and then you, when you jog, it will only the Y axis will move. Uh, if, if everything's active, then uh, you can go any direction you want, any speed you want, and all independently. You can move the x-axis fast and the y-axis slow, any direction you want at any time. So that's pretty much how the, uh, the, joy, the uh, jogging works. It takes a little getting used to because you got you got to be moving in different directions at the same time. But it's very intuitive, and it's once you once you get used to it, uh, then you, you don't want to live without it after that. So. Uh, this is a this is a new product. It's a, it's um, interfaced with Mach 4 through uh, an Ethernet connection, so uh, all of the problems associated with USB are, are non-existent. Uh, it's a little more difficult to set up uh, Ethernet, but once it's once it's set up and running, it's much faster, much more reliable, very bulletproof, and uh, it'll run year after year without any problems.